Pingua. Hi, it's Kayla from Pingua. Welcome to episode two in this three-part video tutorial that will take you through the steps of developing a game in Scratch where an alien is lost in space and must pass through the moving rings that orbit Saturn in order to return to its home planet. Episode two will take you through the steps to begin coding your alien sprite. Let's begin. We will start by coding our Pico walking sprite. Select your Pico walking sprite in the bottom right corner in your sprites menu. Next, select the code in the top left corner to take you back to our drag and drop coding blocks. Next, we are going to click and drag on our Pico walking sprite on the stage and move it to the far left side of the screen. This is where we will code our Pico walking sprite to start each time we play our game. Let's start by clicking on our yellow events tab on the left side of our screen. Click and drag when a green flag clicked block onto our scripting field. We want to tell our Pico walking sprite where to start the game each time and which direction to face. To do this, we will use two blocks from our motion tab. Click and drag our first block, which is go to X, Y coordinates. Note that my coordinates may be different from your coordinates as you would have dragged your Pico walking sprite somewhere to the left side of your page. After we place this block onto our when green flag clicked block, we will also add our point and direction 90 block to this code. Click and drag your point in direction 90 onto the scripting field. Note, you can click on the number in this block and drag the arrow to point in the direction of the home planet. Next, we need to code our four arrow keys so that we can move our Pico walking sprite and guide him through the maze. To do this, we are going to use a conditional statement, if, then. Conditional statements tell the code that if something occurs, then do this. In this case, we will tell the code that if a specific arrow key is pressed, then it will move in that specific direction. For this part of the code, we will be selecting blocks from the motion, control, and sensing tabs on the left side in the toolbox. First, we need to select a block from our control tab. Click on the orange control tab on the left side of your screen and drag a forever loop onto the scripting field. Attach the forever loop to the code in the scripting field. Next, we are going to click and drag four of our if then statements into our forever loop on our scripting field. These conditional statements will be used to control our sprite's movement on the stage. We now need to go to the left side of our screen and select the light blue sensing tab. This is where we will find blocks to fit into our conditional statements. We want to click and drag four of the key space pressed blocks, which are hexagon shaped blocks, onto our scripting field. These four blocks will represent each arrow on our keypad. This block allows us to select different keys on our keyboard that we can code to control the movement of our Pico walking sprite. Select the drop down menu in each block and select one of the four keys used to direct your Pico walking sprite. First, we will select the up arrow, then the down arrow, then the left arrow, and lastly, the right arrow. Now that we have each of our up, down, right, and left arrow blocks, we can place one in each of our if then statements located in our forever loop on our code. This will allow us to add code to our if then statement so that we can control our sprite using the arrow keys. Now, using the X and Y coordinates on our stage, we will code each arrow to slightly move our sprite either along the X or Y axis. Our up and down arrows will move us along the Y axis. Therefore, we want to select the change Y by 10 block, which is located on the left side under our motion tab. Click and drag one change Y by 10 into our first if then statement under the key up arrow pressed. Then click and drag a change Y by 10 also under our if key down arrow pressed then. Our left and right arrows will move us along the X axis. Therefore, we want to select our change X by 10, 
for both our left arrow and our right arrow. Click and drag one block for each if then statement. Next, we need to change the numbers in each block that we just dropped onto our code. For our up and down arrow keys, we want our sprite to take smaller steps. Currently, we have the number 10 in our change Y by, as well as in our change X by. We want to update this number to two in each of the blocks for both change Y and change X. This will allow our sprite to take smaller steps when it's moving. When we move up the Y axis, our number will get bigger, but when we move down our Y axis, the number will get smaller. Therefore, on our if then statement that states if key down arrow pressed change Y by two, we need to put a negative sign in front of the number two. For our X axis, when we move towards the right of our X axis, our number gets bigger. When we move towards the left side of our X axis, our number gets smaller. Therefore, similar to what we did with the down arrow, on the left arrow, we are going to put a negative sign in front of that too as well. Your code should now look similar to my code, which will allow you to control your Pico walking sprite using your arrow keys on your keyboard. Test out your code to see if you can move your sprite around the screen. Note that as you press the up, down, left, and right keys, your Pico walking sprite will make very small movements and kind of make your sprite appear as if it's gliding. This is the end of episode two in this three-part tutorial. Take a break, stretch your legs, and grab a snack. Then check out episode three to finish coding your game. Be sure to follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter to receive updates on other online lessons, activities, tutorials, and more. Thanks for watching.